On June 27, 2022, the land that California's Great America sits on today was announced to be sold to Prologis, which is a Bay Area-based real estate company for $310 million, and Cedar Fair revealed plans to close the park within the next 11 years. As shocking and upsetting as this announcement is, there's an argument to be made that this is a good decision on Cedar Fair's part. This is a topic that could be debated and could be a video on its own, but we won't be talking about that today. Today we'll be discussing how California's Great America went from being a Cedar Fair favorite that received a GCI and RMC Raptor in the last decade, to becoming the most expendable park in the chain. To make things even more wild, this park was actually primed for a major expansion just a few years ago, and they were expected to receive a B&M Hyper for a long period of time. There are some subtle hints given by the chain and the park that the park was being devalued by the chain and it was being scaled back, setting up the pretext for this announcement. Before we get into all of this though, make sure to do me a huge favor by liking this video as it would greatly help out the channel and subscribe if you enjoy the videos on troubled parks like this. This video is actually the third in this series and is the first park to see its troubles result in a closure of the park in this series. I've done videos on Six Flags Great Adventure and Darien Lake so make sure to check out those videos if you like this one. That said, let's take a trip back to 2006 when Cedar Fair first purchased the park from Paramount. If you were just judging Cedar Fair's tenure solely based on their first five years or so of operating the park, you'd think the sale of this park is not very surprising. Cedar Fair seemed to care about this park the least out of the five major former Paramount properties. Carowinds, King's Dominion, King's Island, and Canada's Wonderland all received either a Giga or a Hyper Coaster in the first five years that Cedar Fair owned them. The park got some minor additions here and there, but nothing on the scale of what some of the aforementioned parks received. In fact, Cedar Fair actually removed Invertica, which was a suspended Vekoma boomerang, and relocated it to Dorney Park, indicating the lack of interest the chain appeared to have with the park. This made it seem like California's Great America was the burden of the Paramount sale, and this was proven true when Cedar Fair actually agreed to sell the park to JMA Ventures for $70 million in 2011. The purpose of this sale was to help Cedar Fair reduce its senior secured debt. This is probably the lowest point of the Cedar Fair era thus far. The sale required approval from the City of Santa Clara and the City Council was scheduled to vote on the matter on December 6, 2011, but on that same date, JMA Ventures would cancel their plans to purchase the park. You may think that based on the way Cedar Fair treated the park, they looked to sell it to someone else or close the park entirely, but Cedar Fair did a complete 180 on their plans for the park. Part of the initial campaign to sell the park may have been inspired by the construction of Levi Stadium, which is a football stadium right next to the park where the San Francisco 49ers play. Cedar Fair tried to stop the construction of the stadium by filing a lawsuit in 2009 to stop the project from proceeding, but this lawsuit was thrown out in court. Cedar Fair reached a long-term agreement with the 49ers regarding parking and construction when the cancellation of the sale was announced. Cedar Fair must have realized that Great America was in a prime spot for growth with proper investment given how much traffic the area would be receiving from the new stadium, and they decided that they should try to take advantage of this new market. The first major investment that Cedar Fair threw their way was Gold Striker, a wooden coaster manufactured by Great Coasters International. This coaster was apparently planned for 2009, but those plans were likely thrown out due to the issues that the park was dealing with at the time. This coaster was actually announced with 49ers representatives present, indicating that the team wanted the park to be successful. The Gold Rush theme is one shared by the football team, which was a subtle tribute to their next door neighbors. Although nothing too crazy, this was still a $10 million investment. Gold Striker is still regarded as one of the best wooden coasters in the world and ranks very highly on the Golden Ticket Awards rankings every single year. 2015 brought a Planet Snoopy expansion to the park, and 2016 saw the park's motion theater get a new program called Mass Effect New Earth. These may sound like small additions, but the park had bigger plans on the way. First, Cedar Fair bought the land that the park sat on from the city, as previously they had just leased the land to operate the park. 
The park also applied for zoning changes that would allow them to build rides over 200 feet without having to jump through as many hoops as before. They also were looking to build an entertainment complex outside the park's entrance that would incorporate the existing amphitheater that would now be open to the general public. This complex would be similar to a smaller version of Universal's City Walk found at some of Universal's parks around the world. The park also revealed plans for a major attraction such as a steel roller coaster or water coaster on the site that Invertigo used to sit on. In these plans, there are also several spots marked for family attractions like kiddie coasters, a climb and play structure, or family flat rides. Plans were made for a ropes course, a dinosaurs alive attraction in the grizzly slash demon area of the park, they also wanted to further expand Planet Snoopy, rebrand and expand the water park, and add a new entrance to the water park from the Entertainment District. There are also plans to remarket Vortex the park's stand-up coaster. Cedar Fair later added to these plans in the form of a launch coaster that was heavily rumored to be an intimate impulse coaster, possibly Wicked Twister from Cedar Point. A hyper coaster, a new flume ride, family suspended coaster, and a family wooden coaster directed towards kids. Cedar Fair took steps to execute this plan by converting Vortex to Patriot, the coaster at floorless trains and a new paint job to complete the refurbishment. In 2018, Cedar Fair threw a wild card to California's Great America in the form of an RMC Raptor, which had never been done before. This coaster was opened the same year as Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, so this was technically the second Raptor to open up. But this was a completely new concept coming to the park. This is where a potential turning point for Cedar Fair occurred. Unfortunately, Cedar Fair doesn't really release specific numbers that are easy to break down, but it's possible that Cedar Fair did not like the reception the ride got, rather that being sales or attendance. But based on the timeline, it is clear this is where things started to trend downward. There wasn't anything significant that was new for the park in 2019, but 2020 was supposed to see a water park rebrand with the addition of a new slide complex and new kitty slides in the lagoon. However, this would be delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 2020 brought the COVID-19 pandemic, and unfortunately, California had some of the toughest restrictions on businesses in the whole country. California's Great America was unable to open for the 2020 season and didn't reopen until May 22nd, 2021, with many safety protocols in place. Northern California and the Bay Area were especially hard hit economically by COVID, which led to an overall decrease in profitability for businesses in the area. Cedar Fair started looking at options to sell a park after they realized it made more sense for them to sell the now highly valued land. That led to Cedar Fair striking the deal with Prologis for $310 million for the land that Great America sits on. Cedar Fair said they intended to use this money to help reduce the $2 billion in debt that the chain has. Cedar Fair gave off some subtle hints that they had intentions to sell the park, or they at least indicated that the expansion plans were off and they're looking to scale down the park a little bit. For one, Wicked Twister, Cedar Point's impulse coaster that was heavily anticipated to be relocated to Great America was instead scrapped after its removal in 2021, which was an indication that the 20-year plan was dead. The park also announced that they would be getting rid of their haunt event and replacing it with Tricks and Treats, which was to be a more family-friendly event. Most parks in the Cedar Fair chain run a haunt event except for smaller based family parks like Michigan's Adventure and Valley Fair. The park demolished some of their haunted houses, which led to the indication that Cedar Fair did not want to spend that much money on the park. However, perhaps the most telling thing that happened to California's Great America that best indicated the park's fate was the cancellation of the park's hypercoaster project. Great America filed for a height variance from the FAA to build a coaster up to 210 feet tall that was good for a project that would start construction in 2019 and open in 2020. Cedar Fair had a contract with B&M to build a hypercoaster called Megabyte. However, increasing construction costs apparently were the reason for Cedar Fair to move this project to Kings Island as Orion. This reasoning is a bit suspect considering that they were well along the way to building this coaster and a rising construction cost was apparently enough to completely change the future of this park. I kind of doubt that. If Cedar Fair really wanted to give California's Great America a hypercoaster, they would have done so regardless of a rise in construction costs. It's also very convenient that this happened to start a chain of events that led to the park's closure. The turning point for this park must have come around 2018 
following the opening of Railblazer, which like I said earlier, must have not performed as expected in some way, shape, or form. I'm not saying that the park's fate was sealed in 2018 or 2019 because I think COVID probably played a large role in the chain's decision to sell the park. But Cedar Fair probably already decided they weren't going through with the 20-year plan before the start of the pandemic. Obviously, the pandemic was probably a large part in causing the chain to accumulate the amount of debt that it has, which was probably the reason Cedar Fair looked into selling the land that the park sits on. The ultimate reason for the closure of California's Great America was probably the pandemic, but that was also combined with strict laws that made it hard for the park to expand, a potential letdown with Railblazer and other park additions, the insane value of the park's land, and the effects of COVID restrictions hurting Northern California businesses in general. I think this is all just the perfect storm coming together, leading Cedar Fair to see that selling the park may be the best thing they could do to help the company versus trying to continue to grow it, especially with another strong competitor in Six Flags Discovery Kingdom not too far away. The decision to close California's Great America is very disappointing and it deeply saddens me to think that a lot of people will be losing something that meant so much to them. But that is the brutality of the industry sometimes. Everything is always about money at the end of the day and if that makes Cedar Fair better and a stronger chain in the future, that will be the correct decision for them as much as I hate to see this park close. To me, all of that together is why I think Cedar Fair decided to sell the land that the park sits on. If you have any other potential reason why you think Cedar Fair closed the park or have more information regarding the closure of the park, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Also, in order to celebrate the park, tell me your favorite memory at this park or if you haven't visited this park, like myself, tell me something that excites you about a potential future visit before this park closes in the future. Keep in mind that the park will operate at least to the year 2024 and may operate up until 2030. So you still have time to visit before it closes for good. This also leaves a lot of time for this deal to change as there's lots of variables that could alter this sale especially if the park continues to operate for more than just the two years. If you enjoyed this video or would like to help out the channel feel free to leave a like on the video as it would help me out greatly. Also make sure to subscribe for more videos on Travel Parks coming soon. Now with all that being said I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.